Okay. Hi, I'm Stiopaf, and uh, today we'll continue from the last episode where Ash introduced our monitoring system. Uh, I'll focus on the hardware side of it uh, because it's something not as obvious as uh, software side of it. When it comes to a switches and monitoring traffic, it's quite easy because all the systems like Cacti, Observium are optimized for the stuff to monitor the traffic. Once we go on the different bits like temperature, power, it's not that straightforward and we need to First of all, we need to have hardware that is capable of measuring it and presenting it in some computerized format, be that RS485 bus and Modbus protocol, be that XML file or just uh, pure HTTP. Doesn't matter, we cannot uh, just present that in the graphs, so we have to import that uh, to write a script that would, would transform, transform the uh, raw readings from the device convert it into the format that we can graph and I'll show you both I'll show you the principle of how do we read from the device I'll show you RS485 bus as one of the examples and I will show you wireless sensor as another example and I'll show you briefly on my workstation what is involved in reading them and putting them into cacti Okay, so I'll start you with the wireless sensor because it's uh, closer to our way. So this is a typical wireless sensor. It sends signal to the main receiving station and from the receiving station we can read XML file. We cannot take XML file directly into Cacti, so we will need a script to process it. Every sensor sends uh, temperature readings and humidity readings every couple of minutes and if we don't get a reading from it in like five minutes we would send an alert probably because we need to replace batteries. Let's take it to the hot aisle because currently we're in a cold aisle and I'll show you how it works. So what I did is I took the sensor from the cold aisle and I put it in the hot aisle I put it in front of some airflow so we have quicker reaction to our experiment and I opened a uh, real-time graph that refreshes every five seconds and you see the immediately it goes up once it crosses that blue line after a couple of minutes it would alert us so it would send an email that hello no the temperature here is higher than usual you need to go and check for it why is it happening Okay, I showed you the sensor and now I'll show you power metering box, how we read it. Okay, so if you remember from the last video, those are the metering boxes that meet uh, power to the racks. They have uh, MID certified meter because that's a legal requirement and normally you have two options. You can climb and read them every time and just record their readings or the better way, you can just read them constantly. This is what we do. So this green cable, it goes as a daisy chain and it is a serial cable, serial transmission interface, which is RS485. It's uh, very similar to RS-232, which we all know as a serial port, but it supports more than one device on the bus, and the bus can be as long as one kilometer. So it's quite convenient to use that to read those boxes. Again, they don't have any IP address on them, so RS-485 reading, a Modbus protocol, needs to be converted into IP something that we can present to Cacti. I'll show you how it's done. Let's get back to the dogs, people 
Uh, okay, welcome to my desk, uh, and I will briefly explain you how do we convert the non-IP data to present it to Cacti. I'll start from RS-485 interface, which we're using for reading the data from metering boxes. I don't want to be too technical, but I will just mention that RS-485 interface has so-called slave ID, which is the ID of the box, and it can be set from 1 to 255. And because that matches exactly the IP octet, we introduced a unique uh, virtual IP address system. We assign each box a virtual IP address and using a script to transform as a proxy. It would read from the box, convert it to, uh, to the SNMP data and send it from its virtual IP address. It's quite cool. For the wireless sensor, it's slightly different because wireless sensor has a sensor ID which does not fit in 255. For example, the sensor that I showed you has number 9351. So to upgrade the previous idea, we introduced a host name. So in this case, it's 9351.arex. our domain and we can read from that. So same principle of having virtual IP address, but upgrade it to DNS, to local DNS, which would transform the, transform the um, host name number to a virtual IP address so we can read the data. Finally, the script, both of the scripts, uh, the one that does wireless sensor and the one that does RS-485 reading, would alert us should uh, it would have trouble reading the data from it. So we know immediately if we need to replace batteries or if the cable has failed or something similar happened. And as we saw downstairs, I'll show you the picture on the bigger screen. So this is the sensor that we were playing with, that we disconnect, uh, we took from the ceiling and put into hot area. So if I hover it, you already see the spike. If I click it, you can see the zoomed graph and the temperature went from 22 to nearly 26 before we put it back to avoid alerting guys unnecessarily. And for the power metering boxes, as you can see, the power is fluctuating because the servers are not consistent in drawing the power and it just shows that the power metering works normally. Otherwise, it would be a flat line for like five to 10 minutes, then it would be deep. Okay, I showed you the principles of how we can convert non-IP data into IP data and present it to Cacti. I believe it can be quite useful to you if you are looking to implement something similar to us. And in the next episode, Ash and James promised to connect one of the actual devices to their lab equipment and show you how everything works from start to finish. Stay tuned.